Hi everyone and welcome to the small Angular test tutorial. When working in enterprise Angular projects, you as a developer should also take care of unit testing. Angular has built-in test support and in this video we will create some basic unit tests. Every time you use the ng-generate command to generate something, it also generates test files for you. Opening the test file, you see a pre-rendered test suite for the component or service. Angular uses Jasmine, which is a behavior-driven test framework. The function describe creates a test suite. Before each, gets executed before every test. Optionally, you can use before all. The function it is the actual unit test. If you want to run the tests, just execute the command ng-test. Angular uses a test runner called Karma. It starts a browser, executes all the tests and provides a test report for you. You may find a Karma configuration file in your Angular project. Also in the case you want to ignore a test, you can add an X before describe or before the IT function. These tests will be ignored. Additionally, you can add an F to describe or IT. This will force the test framework to focus on these tests. It may be useful for focusing and debugging on specific tests. The test report shows which tests were executed, which passed and which failed, and also which were ignored. In this video, I will showcase a simple unit test for a service and for a component. Tests for service focus on testing the functionality of the service, that is, functions should return an expected result. Component tests verify that the content of a component is being rendered properly. This is done by accessing the rendered HTML and verifying that some specific HTML elements are existing and have some specific values. To showcase some basic unit tests, I have prepared a simple Angular web app. The page shows the name, the age and the picture of a user. This user data is being provided by an external API. I found a free API which provides a get URL and outputs some random person data. I have created an injectable service in my Angular app, which provides a function to get a user. The function delegates the call to the random user API via the HTTP client. The service function returns an observable so the caller can process the user after the API call has been finished. I will have to create a test for this function. Also I have created a component which uses the service and displays the person data in some diffs. And here I must create a test which verifies that these HTML elements are being rendered with some expected values. Of course the user data must be mocked and provided by a spy. Every test should be isolated and independent of any external API and any other component within the Angular web app. For that I will use the HTTP client testing module to mock the external API and use Jasmine Spice to isolate the user component from the service component. Let's take a look at the pre-generated service test file. Before a test starts, it initializes the testbed. Everything what needs to be run must be provided here in this testbed initialization. And also it injects a user service instance, which is our system under test. So I focus on this service test file and run it with ng-test. The test report tells me that it failed to create the user service. It is missing the HTTP client. Remember in the constructor of the service, I inject the HTTP client. I use it to call the external API. The testbed configuration can be compared with the app module configuration. Everything what the app module needs to run is defined in these arrays. 
For example, you see the HTTP client module is imported here. I can do the same and declare an imports array in the testbed configuration. Instead of importing the HTTP client module, I import the HTTP client testing module. And now the test report tells me that the user service creation was successful. Now I can create another test function to verify that my service returns a user. I also prepare an HTTP testing controller before my tests run. This testing controller enables me to expect HTTP calls and fake responses. In my new test function, I then use the user service instance and call the getUser function. Since the result is provided asynchronously via subscription, I put my expectations in the subscription. Here I can say something like the result must not be null and the result array must have exactly one value. These expectations will only be verified when the HTTP client actually returns a result. For that we must use the testing controller with the function expect1 and expect a request on our API URL. Note that this line will fail if no request on the expected URL was done up to this point. Since I called my service before, this will not fail. The HTTP test controller will return an instance of a test request. On that test request, we can do further expectations, like it must be a get method. And of course, we can flush a fake response to the test request. Finally, in the test report, we can verify that our service tests are all green. Now let's have a look at the pre-generated component test. You notice that it also configures the testbed and it compiles the components. In a second before each function, it creates a component fixture, which contains an instance of the component. This component fixture has a debug element, which enables us to verify the generated HTML result. You also notice that detect changes is called on the component fixture. This must be done every time attributes of the component change, so the content is updated. An example would be you test a mouse click on a button and you want to verify that some text labels are changing. The test report tells us that it is failing to inject the user service due to a missing HTTP client. Our component is using an injected service instance in the constructor to get a user. In this case, we will not use the HTTP client testing module, we will replace the user service by a spy. Jasmine provides a function to create a spy object. When calling the create spy object, we must provide the generic type, in our case the user service, and we must provide an array with at least one function name. We can direct the spy object to replace the call on the getUser function by a fake function.
Then I create a provider for the user service in the test module configuration, which provides my spy object instead of the real instance. Now the test result is green. In the background, our component is getting injected a spy instead of the real service. The tricky part is the ng-on-init method, where the component gets the user data asynchronously. In our test, we need to call the ng-on-init method manually to trigger the fetching of user data. We need a mechanism to wait until the asynchronous call has been finished. For that, we wrap our test function into the fake async function. This enables us to call the tick function after the ng on init call. We can pass a time in milliseconds to wait a certain amount of time, or we can call it without any parameter and it will block until all asynchronous activities are completed. After the tick, we trigger the change detection on the component fixture. Out of curiosity, we can console output the fixture debug element and see that there is the rendered HTML with divs for a name, age and picture of a user. We can apply a query on the debug element using the byCSS call and select by the element ID. To finalize the test, I query for the username, age and picture div elements and expect them to be truthy and to have the correct text contact, like the username Peter Parker. And finally, our component test is green as well. So that's it with the video. Hope this Angular testing crash course was useful. See you next time.